that is the that is the comparison that's developed in this book. If you know anything about the actual history of Italian fascism from 1919 to 1922, the mass movement phase, you'll be looking at that from that point of view. What I'd like to show you now is five or six faces of what terrorism might look like in the coming years. At the point where you see the project, the project community, kick the Chinese out of Africa, destroy Pakistan as a Chinese ally, finally play China against Russia. You've got to create a new enemy image. Who's the enemy image? It's Russia and China, or maybe Pakistan, or maybe Sudan. Let's just go through it. Here's the first face of terrorism for you in the coming years. Remember the Unabomber, Kaczynski? He was very concerned about the environment, so he began sending explosive letters, killing people, maiming people. I would say that in the coming years, you're going to see terrorists going forward for ecological and environmental reasons. They're going to say they're very concerned about global warming, they're concerned about the spread of nuclear power, and they're concerned about okay, and they're concerned about pollution. And maybe what's going to happen is U.S. and British intelligence are going to say, you know, that guy over there is our enemy, and he's a polluter. And they'll tell somebody like this, look at that guy over there, he's a polluter. Why don't you go pay him a visit? So the person is going to be hit, not because they were a polluter, of course, but because they're on the Anglo-American hit list. Let me just, let me just, I'll do him first. This is easier to get to. Here's another face. You know this guy? It's Cho. Cho of Virginia Tech. This was April of last year. So Cho is actually a Korean of Korean origin. Some people said he's a Manchurian candidate. Not quite Manchurian. Korea, close enough. He got his guns and he went on a rampage on the campus and he killed about 30 people. Now, what kind of terrorism is this? A student. Psychotic, but a student. What is it? Korean, Chinese, I don't know. Looks to me like he might be Chinese. What we're doing now is building up the memes. If you did any work on 9-11, you know this expression, the memes of a myth. The memes, the building blocks, the elements like with Bin Laden, it's got to be that he makes speeches, he's in a cave and a laptop. So what are the memes here? A Chinese face, a killer, a student. Student terrorism. Haven't had that in a long time. Could be coming. How about this? This guy's name is Kamir Kazmierchak. John Kazmierchak. He went to Northern Illinois University. You probably don't, you haven't, haven't heard of this one because he's lower, lower level. He's in Northern Illinois University in Rockford, Illinois, last autumn. He comes on the campus, college student, university. He's got guns. He manages to kill six or seven people, and then he's killed. Student terrorist. Now we have two student terrorists. When you're doing this kind of work, you got to look for the straws in the wind, what might be coming. And they always do it by examples. They set examples and then they combine them or they abandon them or they develop them. Now what's his story? Why does he kill people? He has social concerns. He is worried about the lack of justice in the uh, prison system. He's worried about social injustice in the United States. So here's a killer who's a terrorist and he has left cover, not right wing cover, left cover. His story is that he's a leftist and he's worried about this. Now remember, there was a time when people like Bernadine Dorn of the Weathermen and Bill Ayers of the Weathermen, and these are Obama's best friends, this is his social circle, these are the people who started his political career, they're both professors now. Student terrorism under Maoist ideology was a very, very common thing. Do we see a pattern with Cho and Kazmierczyk to these old weathermen from 40 years ago? Okay. How about this one? Litvinenko. What is he? 
how Russian. What's his story? Nuclear terrorism. Those are the only two things you need to know. Here's a Russian who wants to carry out nuclear terrorism. This has big potential. Big, big, big potential. This was obviously uh, a stunt of some kind, carried out by certain British circles, we must say. Uh, the target, of course, is Russia. You're supposed to feel that this man was poisoned by the Russians. That's not certain, by the way. It's quite possible that he might have been mixing something up and things went wrong. And the story that you were told is, is not the story that uh, was really planned. But they did contrive to direct this against Moscow in some way. But just think now, Russian terrorism with nuclear materials, he's even from the KGB. Oh, and he had a theory of 9-11. Did anybody ever read his theory on 9-11? He said, Putin did it. <laughs> Maybe one day you're gonna see Bin Laden come on the television, and Bin Laden's gonna say, I have to make a confession now. I'm not a good Muslim. I've been working for the Russians all along. That's the kind of thing that might happen in the coming weeks and months. And then, I've talked about him before. Akhmadov, he's the ambassador to the United States. He's paid by the United States. The Russians, the Russians have demanded that he be extradited because they want to put him on trial as a mass murderer. But he's happily in Washington because he's a friend of Zbigniew Brzezinski and, and Senator McCain too, for that matter. And uh, you've got to think about all those other little nationalities, again, from the Basques to the Tibetans, to the, uh, the Kosovars, and so forth. And how many possibilities there are to make a whole, what do we have, one minute? Four minutes, okay. A whole thing. Now, let's just go back. You want to see the face of terrorism, think of the memes. Ecological terrorism carried out by well-educated Americans, but crazy. Student terrorism, but with a social agenda, left-wing concerns, the lack of social justice. Chinese killers on the loose. Now, how about these two appear, instead of appearing separately, they appear together, or several people like this appear at one time, or several people like that appear at one time. Right? Maybe somebody like this shows up with something much more powerful. This could really get ugly. I mean, this, there, there's no limit to what could be done. And then again, the whole world descends into chaos thanks to the efforts of people like this. Brzezinski would tell you, if you ask him, he does not plan to have a war between the US and Russia or China. He's basically saying, look, back in the 1930s, the British, had to deal with Hitler and Stalin. And the British approach was called appeasement. And appeasement actually is the word, although it's, it's maybe not an accurate word. The British approach to the 1930s was build up Hitler, encourage Hitler, but encourage Hitler to go east. Play Hitler against Stalin and destroy both of them that way. That was supposed to be the British policy. The problem was that in doing this, they made Hitler strong enough so that he actually went west before he went east. And this was beyond the British control. So here is an example of a strategy of playing this guy against this guy. It's the let's you and him fight. It's the der lachende dritte in German you say, the tertius gaudens in Latin, the third party who stands and laughs while the other two fight. And the idea is that Brzezinski imagines that this time it will succeed. Well, this time it didn't succeed so well, did it? And of course, it had to be Roosevelt to come in and bail out this entire situation. Your man, Boygel, has put on the uh, canvas the prospect of our world under this kind of policy. I'm convinced this is a policy that will blow up in the faces of the people who make it, leaving us with the triumph of death, as Bruegel saw it. That's basically us down there, looking out over this panorama of devastation. And of course this, the notion of switching to a policy of aggression, aggression and the dismemberment of Russia is absolute 
insane folly, suicidal folly, likely to lead sooner or later to something like this. Now, I represent, again, uh, people outside of the Democratic Party and inside who would like to go back to a better policy, the things that actually worked, the good neighbor policy, Lend-Lease, the Bretton Woods, and the Marshall Plan. In other words, there is an alternative. And there are people who are trying to stop Obama from getting the nomination in Denver, because he does not have the nomination until the convention is held. And those are, once again, the Pumas. Uh, we're going to have a national convention of the Pumas on August 8th in Washington, D.C., and we will be discussing how we can convince 175 delegates to the Democratic National Committee to convention to vote against Obama and prevent him from getting the nomination and throw the convention open, wide open, to actual political discussion. So I call for your kind attention to the Pumas. And with that, we're done. Thank you, Ladies and gentlemen.